Hey guys, welcome back to Radio Extreme. I'm your host, Glacier928, and with me today is a special guest, K20NY. Uh, how's it going, guys? It's great to be here. All right, and we just finished going over the PlayStation 4 conference, as we all knew it was going to be PlayStation 4. Now, basically, just before we get into that, this is episode 29. This is the second episode I'm actually holding this week, uh, mainly because of the PlayStation 4 event and it being such a big thing. It's kind of a special episode. So let's just get right to it. Let's discuss some of the things that were announced and you know, what our thoughts are basically on what we've seen so far in the PlayStation 4. Uh, basically, uh, what, what do you think so far from what you've seen? Uh, well, basically, you know, it, it looks like it's going to be a good package. I mean, we just got some bare bones kind of uh, specs. Um, we're talking about like an, an 8 gig RAM, definitely something that's going to be awesome. Uh, obviously, the visuals that were displayed for every game title out there was, uh, you know, pushing the bar to the max, almost like a high-end computer um, where we are with the technology these days. And, and some of the games that they, you know, are starting to come out with different indie games or new original games, they look like they're going to, you know, be the new franchises for uh, Sony. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, basically, when we first, they kicked it off with showing off Killzone Shadowfall as the first real PS4 demo. Yeah, definitely spectacular uh, visual-wise, and, and the gameplay looked pretty awesome. Yeah, gameplay looks like your good old-fashioned Killzone, but the setting was much more vibrant, much more, it wasn't this war-torn environment. It was actually like a vibrant city that you were in that was in the sky more or less or like these really tall skyscrapers and just the, the whole color palette and then the, the visual style of it was just like you said stunning uh it, really really stunning and if there's any developer to really showcase some killer graphics on a console guerrilla games is one of them uh we also saw uh, evolution studios who were in charge of the MotorStorm series mm. take stage and they showed off their new game that they've been wanting to do for over nine years now called drive club which is supposed to be basically this racing game that's about team racing and forming up your own real club and racing people, uh, you know, setting up events to actually race other real teams out there. And they also want it to be this real authentic experience where you actually feel like you're in the car. So they've given you a first-person perspective, but it goes so detailed. Like, you'll start off by outside of the car, you'll open up the car door, you'll sit in, you'll buckle yourself in. But the whole feel of it, the whole visual aesthetic of it is just really mind-blowing and evolution studios is known for their visuals i mean if you look at motorstorm one that was the perfect looking game when the ps3 launched uh and it looks like drive club might be in the same range in terms of a visual style and just a fun factor definitely uh it's definitely showing a different way of racing um with the idea of kind of using a team together where you can challenge people and, and not just whoever wins w wins the race but uh, a team collective effort, you know, to battle, you know, between you and another teammate. Um, and then you can set up different types of uh, races and race them against other teams. And, you know, these, these are not just like maybe one races. This is like a, a series of races, you know, almost like a, a cup sort of circuit type thing where it definitely can, you know, get a lot of your friends involved in a community type setting. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. They were showing off the whole menu user interface and how fast and responsive and slick everything looked to just get events held right then and there. But the other thing that was interesting, and this was mentioned earlier in the event, was the ability to use your tablet or our phone to actually access the game to set up events, uh, which is a very interesting take. And it looks like the PlayStation 4 uh, is definitely going for a more social experience. They kept stressing the fact that it's social. I, I feel like they look at, they've been looking at the popular trend nowadays, and being social is where it's all about. And they even showed with like a game like Knack, which is a very charmingly looking platformer coming to the console in the reins of kind of like a Jack, uh, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet, uh, Crash Bandicoot type of game, which is really refreshing to see, uh, making its way to the PlayStation Four. But they were showing how. The console is supposed to be the social experience where you can actually record your gameplay. It records it automatically, it looks like. And with a simple click of a button, you could just share it anywhere. Or you can have other people on your friends list actually watch your game and comment or even take control of the game if you're having trouble with a scene. It's a real, it's a brand new way of having that old school feel of like having your buddies in a room with you, but now shared online. We're... PSN and Xbox Live are, you know, for example, they were like that first step in terms of like bringing that authentic online gaming experience. Now it's about bringing that authentic online living room experience, I think. Yeah, this is definitely uh, taking a step 
are kind of out of the book from what Nintendo did with uh, their Wii U, where you can kind of comment to people, like you know, you know, in a forum setting, and you can say, "Hey, watch out for this," or "Hey, what about that?" But this is, you know, taking it even another step further, where you can actually have somebody in another location control your physical game if you need help or something like that. And also, just uh, with the social social media buzz, you know, everybody's on Facebook. They got Twitter going on. It's kind of changing the idea of playing, you know, versus a person on a gaming console to playing with an actual human being, you know, another person, your friend. You know, it's it's it looks like they're really going to take that profile um, to a whole other dimension and make it more of a you know an actual. Um, you know, type of experience where you're actually with somebody as opposed to just, you know, another person on a, or another computer setting, you know. Right. Yeah, no, it's definitely pretty revolutionary if you think about it. It's yeah. a really, it's a big step up in oh, terms of yeah, online definitely. connectivity. Uh, but the question was, they didn't really, they didn't show the console at all. Nope. Throughout nope. the two plus hour conference, which is actually pretty, much longer than we expected. Yeah. Um, but they didn't show the console at all, but that's okay. I can actually work with that because Nintendo did the same thing with the Wii U. The only difference was Nintendo showed it over 12 months yeah. late, earlier. Um, whereas Sony is going to show this console at E3 because the system is set for launch this holiday season. They, it said right at the end of the conference, PlayStation 4, holiday 2012, uh, 2013, excuse, excuse me. But, you know, in terms of the controller, the DualShock 4. Yeah. Uh, kind of an interesting take. It's basically more or less what we've seen in development kits that have been leaking online. But the control sticks look different. The front of the pad looks a little bit different. Uh, and then the top has like a blue light sensor. And it looks like it uses a sensor bar because you can actually use it as an IR pointer to tilt the camera in a game, for example, or mm. interact in certain ways. Yeah, they actually, it looks like, you know, if you take your, your PS3 controller now and you kind of pull, pull it apart maybe like an inch, um, and then you put a little touch type bar on the top of it um, and then above that kind of on the front of the controller there's a light bar um, not exactly sure how much that's going to play into it it kind of sounded like what they were going to do was do something like with the move controllers where the different player you know whether you're one two three or four you light up a different color um, I thought that, I, that they had mentioned that to kind of indicate which one is which right but um, also using that as like an indicator again uh, like like Glacier said with you know uh, telling how far away you are and everything like that, so it should be something interesting. And along with the you know the touch ability that it's going to have, you know, it's something that's going to be interesting. We'll have to see what it's like, you know, when you're actually holding it because it's going to be a little different. But um, they said they increased the rumble feature, which is cool, and um, you know, I'm just excited to see what else they have in store for it. Yeah, and then uh, Gaikai, the cloud service uh, that they were showing off, uh, David Perry from. Uh, Shiny Entertainment, who used to work for Shiny Entertainment, uh, is now the, one of the uh, head honchos there, more or less. And he was really stressing the whole cloud feature of the console and st stressing the connectivity of... Well, first off, the, he mentioned the backward compatibility of being able to eventually, their goal at least, is to eventually let you be able to access via cloud your PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation Mo Mobile games. Yeah, this is, you know, obviously it's probably going to be a long working in progress. Yeah. You know, who knows how long this will take, but it's something that's definitely going to be interesting to be able to have all of those, um, you know, Sony history of games, you know, at, at one little, you know, touch of a button. Right, and he was also like pretty much stressing out, saying it'll know if your friends got a certain game by pointing out to you while you're in the main menu of the console uh, certain games or games from certain developers or certain creators that would pertain to you based on your friends and what you play. And yeah, it's really kind of like it's it's kind of like Apple's genius system. Yeah, in a sense, yeah. Uh, they kind of touched upon this a little bit that it would kind of recommend things for you and almost go a step further. And kind of start to like download things that it thinks you might like, like a, maybe a game demo of, of a type of game that you would like, um, which is pretty interesting. It's a little scary at the same time, but we'll have to see how that's like. <laughs> actually, and the other thing was the suspend feature. How yeah. You could oh, actually yeah. play a game and you don't have to reach that save point. You could finally just put the system in a very low power state and walk away, go do what you got to do, come back home, hit the click of a button, and get right back into right where you stopped. Yeah, this is definitely something that they really wanted to improve on, not having to shut the system off, turn it back on, save a game, you know, load a game, 
just be able to jump right where uh, you know you left off. So that should definitely be something that would be helpful and appreciated by customers. And, and now here's the thing: they were really stressing about how, based on they were the consoles have always been based on future formats. So the PlayStation One was about bringing gaming to a, a compact disc. Whereas the PlayStation 2 was moving into a DVD, and then the PS3 was Blu-ray technology. Yeah. Now, they didn't really mention any format, but instead they really kept pushing the whole digital perspective by saying that now, when you download a game, you can actually play the game while it's still downloading. And it'll keep downloading while you're playing, thanks to uh, some of the, the processors that they have running in the console. Yeah, some, some of the technology that they have is actually pretty pretty amazing when you think about it, to be able to touch a game, jump right into it, you know, while you're downloading the game, you're playing the game, you're checking out whether you want to do it, and this is something that they mentioned about with their cloud systems, um, the, the guy, what, what, the guy key? Guy guy key, guy? yeah, and um, they talked about, you know, having the ability to have every game, you know, be, be testable, to see whether you really want to play the game, and, and seeing, you know, is this a game for me, do I really want this game before I buy it? And to have it, you know, kind of at the touch of a finger, you download it, you play for a little bit. As it's, you know, downloading the rest of the game, you can continue. You know, we don't know what it's going to be, whether it's a time demo or it's a level or two or something like that. But right. definitely this digital push, it, it's interesting. We'll have to see whether they, they try to go, you know, as more digital than already is out there. But Yeah, definitely very interesting to say in the least. I mean, you know, we've also seen some pretty cool, uh, some developers take stage. Uh, discussing about what their thoughts are. For example, David Cage from Quantic Dream, uh, who's known for Heavy Rain and also the upcoming Beyond Two Souls, was mentioning his thoughts on the console and how he would like the console to envelop more of an emotion. Uh, Other developers are stating certain things that they wanted. For example, uh, Alex Evans from Media Molecule, uh, who's known for the Little Big Planet series, was stating how it's all about this whole tyranny of polygons and how to eliminate that Mm -hmm. so they've come across this concept of using the playstation move controller to actually design your dreams and design anything you can think of by simply using the move controller in all in 3d uh, as well as even controlling things with the move controller as if you're there yeah think of a think of a minecraft um you know type of of environment you know where you can construct anything you want with the move controller you know you're making 3d objects appear right in front of your you know your face on the screen and uh, being able to create, you know, basically anything you can draw, um, and it's it's not, you know, for people that are very artistic and have a fine tooth, you know, fingernail or, or finger, you know, anybody can develop the stuff because of the way it just comes out. And and some of the things that they came up with, they were just building a city, you know, in seconds within our eyes. So it's definitely something to be interesting, you know, whether they take it where you can design your own type of game or environment, who knows? But even just the the idea of developing something like that is cool. Yeah, absolutely. And then on top of that, uh, they were even stressing about how the platform is a creative console. Yes. Uh, but they were also then stressing that the console is very indie developer friendly. For example, uh, Jonathan Blow, who was the creator of Braid, uh, which was released a couple of years ago, which really was an amazing indie title. Uh, he took the stage and finally showed off his three and a half year project called The Witness, mm-hmm. which will be coming to the PlayStation 4 within its launch window. Uh, visually, it was a very vibrant, very colorful-looking game, yep. and it was very unique. It was about kind of solving these puzzles that advanced, that opened up either a doorway or a pathway to keep your continuing your journey. Uh, but of course, if it's anything like Braid, it'll get m- very complex and very, yeah. um, you know, intensive with obviously, your mind. <laughs> obviously, not for you know your hardcore uh, shooter gamer, but but definitely something different. And it's it's great to see that different people and more studios are having the ability to design you know, uh, different types of platforms on, you know, the bigger consoles and being able to just to get their, their name out there and some type of product that they're really passionate about out there is great. Absolutely. Uh, and then, I mean, we've also seen uh, Blizzard Entertainment, which was, I think, the one of the biggest surprises. Yeah. Um, Blizzard yeah. Entertainment, known for World of Warcraft and Diablo 2 and 3, uh, the whole Diablo franchise, took the stage and they said that Diablo 3 is not only coming to the PS3, but it's also coming to the PlayStation 4. Mm. and said it looks absolutely amazing on consoles and he you know uh really couldn't stress enough how amazing it looked and how excited he was about bringing about the the game to these two consoles yeah i mean he's saying that it looks incredible on ps3 already so i can't imagine what it'll be on ps4 when it comes out yeah and there he was also stressing the fact that it could be a four-player co-op 
full screen experience. Yeah, yeah. So definitely something interesting and something different. Yeah, and it's you know very cool. I mean, there was always rumors about Diablo three eventually coming to platforms, but there was never anything official. This is official. Um, pretty uh, also Bungie. Bungie, yeah, another surprise. B- big big surprise. Uh, showed off their trailer for Destiny. And announced that it's coming to both the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, and the PlayStation versions will include exclusive content. Uh, and it's supposed to be pretty much the successor to Halo in one sense or another. At least that's what I was getting off of it, because yeah. they were pretty much saying how they looked at Halo, they looked at how critically acclaimed it was and how commercially successful it was, and how to kind of turn heads with the FPS genre again. Yeah, they wanted to you know kind of reinvent the... You know, craziness of, of the first Halo and, and what Call of Duty, you know, kind of three and four was like when it first came out, taking that first person shooter, you know, fantasy and, and kind of flipping it on its head and rebuilding it again. Yeah. So finding some kind of game that you know, people can get re energized about. Yeah, and they were really stressing the whole co op feature and how the game's a very communicative game where it's like you'll constantly be jumping into people's games to help them out with their. Uh, yeah, with their yeah. progression. So very interested to see where Destiny's going. It's been a, a long project in, in the making, but it's getting closer to its release. So I want to see what Bungie's got up their sleeve with that. Um, on top of that, I mean, the interface that we've seen so far on the PS4, when they were showing off NAC, now we're mm-hmm. going back again to NAC for a second, uh, they were showing off the heads up display, the user interface where yeah. you can share the game, you could uh, you know check out other content within the game, and they were really stressing how it's going to be a social platform that connects with Facebook and Ustream, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so again, back to that streaming concept, I think that's a very, very smart move. Yeah, they talked about a little bit sh- showing um, one of the examples was was uh, with Killzone, not to jump back and forth, but to show that you can take a video, and um, they also did this with Knack. They can actually backtrack the game in a little bit and take stuff that happened in the game already and take it and transform it into a video and then take that video and then share it somewhere. What they did with with Killzone after they showed their demo of the gameplay, they actually uploaded it to their Facebook website. So if you go to the Facebook Killzone page, you can watch that video that was uploaded directly from the PS4 itself. Right, which is very, very cool. And, I'm, I'm very excited for that. And also the ability to... Um, download and upload things while you're playing other things you don't have to wait anymore yeah that that's a big improvement i think yeah that's a massive improvement um on top of that i mean capcom even took the stage they showed off uh yoshinori ono the uh more or less the father of street fighter uh he actually took the stage and showed off a new ip called deep dawn Mm -hmm. Um, and that's actually a pretty interesting looking game they're really trying to stress a kind of survival horror element within medieval times where it was this warrior going through a cave yeah. and there's this massive dragon and it's like very dark and eerie and you know really stressing trying to ha- trying to survive against such a uh, behemoth of a creature yeah kind of like you know you know a, sc- a scary if you if you would say kind of feel to it you know walking around in a cave you have the fire holding it up and the shield and and you have to battle you know with like a dragon at one point that's what they showed so yeah, and visually it looked pretty impressive. They're yeah. using the new engine, which was called. Uh, uh, some, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> it was uh, Prada Rai, I think, something like that. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I think that was it. Something yeah. along those lines. Apologies if. Uh, Prada Rai, yeah. Prada Rai, it was that, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's actually cool to see that they have a new engine that they were building upon with their framework engine that they had on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, as well as their uh, 3DS one that was working coincide with it. But on top of that, I mean, you know, we didn't get to see the console, like I said. Yeah. But that's okay. We'll see that in E3 most definitely, along with the, the launch, the official launch date and the price. Mm-hmm. Um, any other things you want to touch uh, on? We did get to see Watch Dogs again. Yes. Uh, oh, wow. Which, okay. was, which was back from, you know, Ubisoft's presentation at E3 last year. Uh, again, they showed more, you know, a little bit different of uh, gameplay footage, which was great. Um, it still looks impressive as it did back then. Yeah, it really does. Really, really, if anything, that's still one of my most anticipated games. And definitely changing pace, you know, being able to have almost absolute control of the environment you're in is, is definitely going to be something interesting. And actually, what I loved was how advanced... Again, back at E3, we were already blown away with how advanced the AI was, with how every all the, uh, non, the NPCs in the environment were interacting with each other. Yeah. Uh, this time, it, they were showing off the AI of the enemy, where... Uh, this this lady's being mugged in an alleyway, and you start chasing after the guy 
yeah. that was trying to mug her. And the AI is being advanced. It's trying to shoot back at you, but then it's like it could either go through, it can go along the street, or and instead it actually cuts through a, a convenience store. Yeah. So it barges through that door and runs through the convenience store, and you see the customers actually like freaking out realistically, and you're like running through it, and then you end up walking through the back end, the back exit of the store, running through the alleyway, doing all these parkour style moves of sliding over, uh, you know, like the dumpsters or jumping over the fence, and then you grab him, you tackle him, you start beating the crap out of him with a nightstick. Uh, and from there, you see the cops coming after you, and you're using your phone to deactivate the cop cars, or uh, you know, then he ends up going up a, a building yeah. and stops a train that's on a, a subway above the road and jumps on top of the train to, as his getaway. But there's a security camera that catches him, and he shuts down the security camera before it can ha- hack into his device. And that's kind of where the trailer ends, which is very intense. Yeah, it definitely has a different feel to it completely. You know, you're in control of the game. The game's not controlling you. Um, just to show off the different things that you can do, you know, being able to stop the train and, and being able to catch that security camera where it sees you, you know, riding along a train on the top, you shut it off, then you can't be seen. You know, you're escaping the police, you're outsmarting them. He had nowhere else to go and, and he used his environment to his advantage. Yeah, it was really mind-blowing, to say the least. Yeah. Really, really impressive. So, but that should pretty much wrap up our... Pretty, pretty much, we're pretty excited to see where the PlayStation 4 is going to go at this point. Yeah, yeah. We're not not sure, you know, it, obviously it looks pretty awesome, but uh, there's still much, much more to find out and to see. Yeah, there's much more to see. We'll, we'll be seeing more in the coming months. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, guys, sound off in the comments. If you guys checked out the conference... Definitely sound off on what you guys think. Are you excited for the PlayStation 4? Are you guys kind of hesitant and want to see a little bit more? Uh, are you guys not excited at all? Do you guys not think it's a visual leap or a huge leap? Uh, again, sound off your thoughts on the entire event. And as always, this is Glacier928 signing off. And remember, guys, game on.